Muamua, which is an object that we detected in space, is believed by some to possibly have been extraterrestrial in origin, potentially originating from a civilization. In 2013, Voyager 1 made history by becoming the first human-made object to enter interstellar space, achieving this milestone 36 years after departing Earth. Currently, the space probe is an astonishing 145 billion miles away from Earth, causing message transmission and reception to take nearly two days, specifically 20 hours and 33 minutes. NASA's engineers could never have anticipated Voyager 1's extended space exploration, now approaching half a century. Yet, this sophisticated instrument has once again surprised us by detecting 500 unidentified objects passing through space. World-famous podcaster Joe Rogan has joined the conversation, shedding light on the alarming implications of this extraordinary discovery. The question arises, what are these mysterious objects? Could they be the result of extraterrestrial beings, or are they a malfunction on the spacecraft? Join us as we delve into how Voyager 1 detected 500 unknown objects in space and explore Joe Rogan's thoughts on this astounding discovery. Have you ever wondered why, despite the unimaginable vastness of the cosmos, we haven't found concrete proof of advanced extraterrestrial civilizations? This enigma, known as the Fermi Paradox, has captivated scientists for centuries. However, a recent encounter in deep space has sent shockwaves through the scientific community, potentially shedding light on the age-old question of the existence of aliens. Joe Rogan, a prominent commentator and podcast host with a keen interest in discussing aliens and advanced civilizations, has previously hosted guests like David Grush and Avi Loeb to explore the potential for life beyond Earth. Now, new data from Voyager 1 may hold the key to answering the question of whether we are truly alone in the universe. Buckle up as we explore why Joe Rogan's announcement about Voyager 1 detecting 500 unidentified objects passing through space is a game-changer and how it affects you, regardless of where you are in the world. But before we dive into those intriguing details, let's explore how the groundbreaking Voyager 1 mission began. Isn't it mind-boggling to think that our magnificent Earth, with its vast oceans and towering mountains, is just a tiny speck in the grandeur of the universe? Philosophers have pondered this fact for centuries, but it wasn't until the 1970s that NASA scientists truly grasped the scale of our cosmic neighborhood. It all started with an accidental alignment of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, the four largest planets in our solar system. Amidst this celestial dance, a young Ph.D. student named Gary Flandro, working part-time at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory while pursuing his studies at the California Institute of Technology, stumbled upon a remarkable discovery. Through meticulous calculations and charting of the orbital paths of these giant planets, Flandro unearthed a celestial phenomenon that would change the course of space exploration. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, the four planets would align in a mesmerizing formation resembling pearls on a cosmic necklace, with Earth nestled among them. This discovery excited NASA, presenting an unprecedented opportunity to optimize the trajectory of a space probe. By cleverly utilizing the gravitational pull of each planet during flybys, a spacecraft could harness a speed boost akin to being tugged by an invisible cosmic cord, propelling it forward. Flandro's estimation suggested that these gravity assists from the giant planets could shrink the flight time between Earth and Neptune from a daunting 30 years to a mere 12 years. However, there was a catch. This celestial alignment occurred only once every 176 years. Recognizing the significance of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, NASA embarked on an ambitious mission to capitalize on the planetary alignment. Two spacecraft, named Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, were developed with identical designs and purposes. Launched just 15 days apart in the summer of 1977, these twin explorers were set on a course to unravel the mysteries of the solar system and venture into interstellar space. Voyager 1, launched on September 5, 1977, became an integral part of the Voyager space program, a testament to humanity's insatiable curiosity and quest for knowledge. For nearly five decades, this brave traveler has forged ahead, beaming back invaluable data to Earth through NASA's deep space network. It serves as our eyes and ears in the vastness of space, connecting our terrestrial existence with the mysteries that lie beyond. 
As we admire Voyager 1's incredible journey, it's worth noting that its distance from Earth is truly mind-blowing. As of August 2023, the space probe is an astonishing 24 billion kilometers away, making it the farthest man-made object from our planet. Meticulously crafted by the brilliant minds at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Voyager 1 embarked on its historic odyssey from Launch Complex 41 at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, propelled by a Titan III-E launch vehicle. And just when you thought you'd seen it all, a recent revelation unfolded. Now, let's explore the remarkable expedition that led to the discovery of 500 previously unknown objects passing through space and the intriguing details Joe Rogan provides in a recent episode of the Joe Rogan Podcast, How Did Voyager 1 Successfully Navigate Through Space? What special scientific instruments and subsystems were behind such success? Imagine a man-made space explorer conquering the forces of deep space for decades. That's Voyager 1 for you. This courageous spacecraft has already traveled a mind-boggling 145 billion miles away from our home planet, Earth. Try to wrap your head around that for a moment. It's like covering a distance approximately 3.6 times the span between the Earth and the Sun every single year. But Voyager 1 isn't just about its velocity, longevity, and distance. It has gifted us groundbreaking revelations, including its recent discovery of 500 unknown objects in the vastness of space. These celestial entities are like nothing we've ever seen or identified before, a cosmic treasure trove of mysterious wonders. Now, you might be wondering how a spacecraft launched in 1977 can still be operational and deliver such mind-blowing information. Well, the answer lies in the remarkable engineering and foresight that went into Voyager 1's design. One key to its longevity is the presence of dual redundant computer systems. Both Voyager 1 and its twin Voyager 2 were equipped with two sets of command computer subsystems. The Flight Data Subsystems, FDS, and the Altitude and Articulation Control Subsystems. This redundancy was a stroke of genius ensuring smooth transitions between systems and the ability to activate dormant computer components when needed, effectively extending their lifespan. The computer systems aboard these Voyager spacecraft were organized as a distributed system with three dual-redundant pairs of computers. This clever arrangement ensured that even if one system failed, the other could seamlessly take over, preventing any mission-critical failures. To make the most efficient use of limited power resources, Voyager instruments relied on hardwired logic. In other words, the computer systems were designed with simplified hardwired circuits operating within the constraints of power budgets and time limitations during the spacecraft's development. Power management is crucial for maintaining the operational integrity of Voyager 1. The spacecraft's distance from the Sun, where it can harness solar energy, poses a significant challenge. To maximize power efficiency, engineers had to come up with innovative ways to conserve and optimize power usage, and let me tell you, their strategies are truly extraordinary. Selective power shutdowns of non-essential systems play a pivotal role in power management. Engineers meticulously evaluate which components or subsystems are not vital for the primary mission objectives. For instance, heaters linked to specific scientific instruments have been turned off. Initially designed to maintain instruments at specific temperatures for optimal performance, deactivating these heaters significantly reduces power consumption, thereby extending the spacecraft's overall lifespan. However, the decision to power down non-essential systems is not taken lightly. It involves a careful evaluation of the trade-offs between power conservation and the scientific objectives of the mission. Engineers collaborate with scientists to ensure that deactivating specific systems doesn't compromise the quality and availability of scientific data. The goal is to strike a delicate balance that maximizes power efficiency while maintaining essential functionality. What's truly fascinating is that Voyager 1's power management strategies adapt to the changing conditions of its environment. As the spacecraft moves farther away from the Sun, where available solar energy decreases, Voyager 1 adjusts its power usage accordingly. This ensures that the available resources are efficiently allocated to support critical operations and data transmission, functioning like a smart energy-saving mode that kicks in automatically. Over the years, there have been remarkable technical advancements and improvements in power management techniques. Engineers have refined the power systems of the Voyager probes, 
implementing upgrades such as more efficient power distribution, improved battery charging methods, and advancements in power regulation and control. Thanks to these meticulous power management strategies, Voyager 1 has surpassed all expectations, continuing to send back invaluable information almost half a century after its launch. Considering that this space traveler was initially designed to last a mere five years, its enduring mission is nothing short of astonishing, a testament to the dedication and skill of the scientists and engineers who have worked tirelessly to keep Voyager 1 operational. Yet, let's not forget that the depths of deep space are full of surprises, so hold on tight, because a major discovery is right around the corner. The Voyager missions, aimed at exploring the vastness of the solar system and beyond, were equipped with an impressive array of scientific instruments, suites, and subsystems. These instruments were strategically placed on the spacecraft's body, consisting of a staggering 65,000 individual parts. While the Voyagers set out with numerous functioning instruments, only four remain operational on Voyager 1, and five continue to work on Voyager 2. One enduring instrument on both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 is the low-energy charged particle detector. This instrument observes cosmic radiation and particles originating from the Sun, planets, and interstellar space. Another essential instrument, the Cosmic Ray Instrument, actively seeks out highly energetic particles from both the Sun and other galactic sources. Currently, it is engaged in detecting particles within the protective bubble exerted by our Sun's influence and particles emanating from the vast expanse of interstellar space. These readings were crucial in determining the moment Voyager 1 crossed into interstellar space, and remarkably, this instrument remains operational on both spacecraft. The Plasma Wave Subsystem, featuring two elongated antennas, serves as a vital tool for measuring the electrical field components of potential waves encountered at the outer planets. Its role has evolved as the Voyagers ventured into interstellar space, providing valuable insights into the changes experienced by plasma waves in this new realm. Notably, it continues to operate on both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Initially designed to investigate the magnetic fields of the outer planets, the magnetometer now plays a central role in exploring the transition region between the interplanetary and interstellar media. Scientists use this instrument to examine the magnetic characteristics of the transition region located at the boundary where the Sun's magnetic influence interacts with and gives way to the magnetic field of interstellar space. Remarkably, the magnetometer remains functional on both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Another significant instrument is the Plasma Science Instrument, which meticulously examines the lowest energy particles within the plasma. It can identify particles moving at specific velocities and, to a limited extent, determine their point of origin.